everyone, everyone. This is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com. Here to do your monthly angel card reading for February 2019. Wow, can you believe that we're already in the month of February? So brand new month, brand new energy. We're going to be using the Syrian Starseed Tarot by Patricia Corey and Alyssa Bartha for the main message for the month for everyone. And your special message card, depending on your stone of choice this month, is going to be coming from a brand new deck that I just got. I actually used it last week for the weekly reading for the first time. It's called Messages from the Light Meditation Deck by Joyce Huntington. I think you're going to like it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by looking at your stones of choice before we get into the energies of February. So this is a brand new stone that I've just gotten recently. This is called Shelite. I've never even heard of it. And let me tell you, I, I have a lot of stones and I usually know my stones, but this was a new one that I found. For those of you that want to know how to spell it, it's S-C-H-E-E-L-I-T-E, -E -E, Shelite. And this is a stone that gives clarity of thought and creativity. It assists with deeper connection with one's own soul. It helps to build community. It balances the higher self with the inner self, helps you to see the bigger picture and to understand others from a place of non-judgment. It's also good for emotional balance, calming, bringing in the divine feminine energy and a deepening of one's consciousness. Your second ch stone of choice is something that we all know and love. This is called Rose Quartz. You can see that these are all, so far, hearts. And, of course, it's February. This is the month of Valentine's Day here in, in the United States. And I hope that you all celebrate it all over the world. But this Rose Quartz, of course, is about unconditional love, forgiveness, compassion. It helps to resolve anger and disappointments and replaces those energies with the energy of love. This is a stone of romantic love and love of self. Opens the heart chakra, instills trust, dispels fears surrounding relationship matters, helps to heal the divine, heal with the divine feminine energies, helps to actually balance the third eye and the crown chakra with the heart chakra, heals wounds from the past and past lives, provides peace, nourishment, and comfort, and attracts new love, romance, and intimacy. And then your last stone of choice, the last heart that you get to choose from, is ruby and fuchsite. Can you see that beautiful red ruby within the green fuchsite here? This ruby and fuchsite helps to clear blockages in the heart chakra and fill the void with supportive and loving energies. Helps to transform negative and destructive energies into positive and uplifting ones, activates and enhances psychic awareness, awakens latent psychic abilities, enhances connection and communication in the spiritual realms, releases emotional stress and brings tranquility, helps you to understand that love can be achieved at the spiritual level. So again, your stones of choice are the Shelite heart, the Rose Quartz heart, or the Ruby and Fuchsite heart. Okay, so let's start by talking about the energy of the month of February. Now, Again, universally, the year 2019, it adds up to a 12, okay? So to get the energy of the month, we take that 12 universal year energy and we add it to the month in question. February is the second month, so 12 plus 2, the second month, is a 14. Now, 14 is a karmic number in numerology. Uh, let's look at the reduced digit first. If we take the number 14 and we add the 1 plus the 4, it equals a 5. So February, with a, a 5 universal month energy, is a month of change. 5 is about change and redirection, new people, new places, new things, opportunities, groups of people, networking with, with those of like mind. Uh, it deals a lot with the mental realm as well, you know, with communication and analyzing things and coming up with new ideas. It's a very uh, fast kind of paced number. In other words, uh, a lot of things are happening all at once. You're juggling many things or wearing many hats. And the, the energies can almost be a little bit chaotic with the number five because there's so much going on. Now, if we look at the karmic number 14, 
in numerology, the karmic number 14 deals with karmic issues of freedom because the number five is all about freedom, freedom and change. So here we have karmic issues regarding our sense of freedom. And this can come from previous lifetime experiences. This can be about karmic lessons regarding change and allowing change or um, this can be about scattered energies. Again, that number five is a little bit about scattered energy, so it can mean um, karmic lessons regarding focusing enough of that energy that's going on around you in order to move forward. I want to point out that the number 14 is made up of a one and a four, okay? So the one is about the self, taking charge of your life, moving forward. So this is about taking charge of your own sense of freedom. However, the number four brings in this element of patience and slow movement and going through lessons. And so in order to get to the freedom, in order to get to the change, in order to get to the new opportunities that this 14 slash five energy brings in for the month of February, we have to be patient. We have to take things step by step. We have to move slowly and pay attention to the details. So even though there's a lot of like that chaotic, fast moving energy, there's also this energy of slowing you down enough to be contemplative enough to take the steps forward that's needed in a patient manner to get to the change, if that makes any sense. Now the 14th major arcana in the tarot, in the Syrian starseed tarot, it's called alchemy, which is beautiful. In the traditional tarot, it's called temperance. Now temperance is all about needing to have a little bit of patience. You know, it's almost like being able to sit still enough and have patience enough while the change is happening. Now temperance, as well as this card, alchemy, if you think about what alchemy means, the alchemical process is about taking one energy and transforming it into something else. The alchemists of ancient times would take lead, one substance, and turn it into gold, a different substance. So think about that when we think about this whole month of February being the karmic number 14 that relates to alchemy, relates to the temperance card. We're taking the energies of what was of a situation, a circumstance, a relationship, a way of being, a way of acting, and we're now going to transform it into something new, something different. And that kind of goes along with the eclipses that we had back in January. We had a new moon solar eclipse, we had a full moon lunar eclipse, and that was a lot of changing energies that we're going to we're going to still see the unfolding of situations and events and how that path is going to lead us. And in having, having that energy, we need to have a little bit of patience as we're doing so. And we're transforming what was, what we were experiencing back at the end of last year, back at the beginning of this year. We're taking the situations and circumstances of our lives and we're now going to transform them as a result of those eclipse energies back in January. So look at this beautiful alchemy card. I mean, we have this sphere, it's a, it's a substance, it's a solid piece of mass, it could even, it even looks like a planet of some sort. And we have the fire here, the fire of transmutation, the fire that's going to uh, create a new energy with this mass, with this planet, with this, whatever this is, you know, this could be career, life path, this could be finances, money, this could be wh whatever circumstances and situation, this this alchemical fire down here is transforming it. We're creating something new and something better by going through this process. But remember, with alchemy, you have to be focused and have patience as that transformation is taking place. Now, let's talk about the astrological highlight, highlights for the month of February. Um, I don't talk about all of the astrological transits. I leave that for the weekly readings and for my Facebook posts. But I try to hit the highlights, and we actually start February out with a pretty strong um, astrological energy. We have Mars, which is the planet of energy and action, the warrior planet. And he is going to be challenging Pluto, the planet of death and rebirth and transformation and transmutation. Going back to, again, this transformation, transmutation, this alchemical process. Now... Mars square Pluto or Mars challenging Pluto can be 
quite, again, as I said, a powerful energy. Pluto rules power. Mars is the warrior. Pluto is the transformer. So we're going to see right off the bat, right in the, the beginning of the month, and if you're watching this a little bit early, the last few days of January as this energy is building, there should be a huge shift going on, a huge transformation. Now that transformation can be either within you, and it could be uh, transforming your belief systems or transforming your emotional body, your mental body, or even your physical body. You might be going through some, some things on a personal level, but this can also be transforming situations and circumstances in your life and really powerfully redirecting them. Okay. Again, it's death and rebirth energies here. Um, before we discovered Pluto to rule Scorpio, Mars was actually the ruler of Scorpio. So here we have the ancient planet and the modern planet that rule Scorpio that are challenging one another. So it's very powerful. On the 2nd of February, we have Venus in a positive trine aspect to Uranus. Now, why am I mentioning this? This I wouldn't normally mention per se in a monthly reading, but it's because Uranus for most of the month of February is at the 29th degree of Aries, the last degree of Aries, which is a critical degree. When we're at the 29th degree of any particular sign, it's considered a, a critical degree, and it really intensifies the energy of that planet in that sign. So again, all month, for most of the month, my, um, Uranus is at that 29th degree of Aries, um, except for the first few days. But anyway, Venus is connecting with Uranus, and Venus rules money, finances, relationships, partnerships, love, and this is a positive aspect, but with Uranus, you expect the unexpected. This could bring freedom energies, um, freedom from limitations in partnerships, freedom from limitations in money and financial matters. This could bring surprises, new people coming into your life, or um, a blessing or gift, either of an opportunity or, again, some sort of financial gift that comes in out of the blue or unexpectedly. Something kind of swoops in here. Now, again, it's positive for the most part, but you never know what you're going to get with Uranus, so you have to pay attention. Then on the third, the very next day, Venus moves out of um, Venus moves out of the sign that she's in, which is Sagittarius, and she moves into Capricorn. So again, when she connected with Uranus, Uranus is at the 29th degree of Aries, a fire sign. Venus was at the 29th degree of Sagittarius, freedom, expansion, seeing the big picture. Now, on the third, she moves into Capricorn, which is an earth sign, a practical sign, a more grounded sign, more focused on career, life path, destiny path, her goals and her ambitions. And for the rest of February until March 1st, Venus will be in the sign of Capricorn. Now, remember, too, Venus rules money and finances, so she's working on her goals to create and manifest more of a sense of security in her life. She uh, rules relationships, so she's more practical and grounded when dealing with relationship matters. And of course, Capricorn rules our goals, our ambitions, our career, our destiny path. On the fourth, and I seem to be going day by day here, but the first few days, there's a lot of important things going on. On the fourth of February, we have a new moon at 15 degrees of Aquarius. Now, when I did the weekly reading that covers um, this first week of February, the message I got from spirit from my angels and guides regarding this new moon at 15 degrees of Aquarius, which is the middle degree of the sign. We're right smack dab in the middle degree of that sign of Aquarius, 15 degrees. They said that we were at a crossroads here. So it's almost like we're standing at a crossroads and we have a path that goes to the left and a path that goes to the right. And we're needing to make a decision here of which way we're going to go. What's the next step? Now, Aquarius energy, of course, is humanitarian energy, higher mind energy, download of higher dimensional information and messages from the universe. Um, it's a very intellectual and communication-oriented sign. Um, and again, deals with humanitarian efforts coming together with groups of like-minded people. Now, the interesting thing about this new moon which, of course, new moons are always about new beginnings, on February 4th, is that on and around the same day, a few days before, a few days after, Saturn, the planet of lessons, the planet of karma, is at 15 degrees of Capricorn. And why is that significant? Because the new moon solar eclipse that we had on January 5th, it was at 15 degrees of Capricorn. 
So at that time, we had the moon and the sun at 15 degrees Capricorn forming that new moon solar eclipse. Now Saturn is crossing that degree at 15 degrees of Capricorn, activating that solar eclipse energy of new beginnings. But again, it was also regarding endings and completion phase. Okay, So Saturn is wrapping up some sort of karmic situations and karmic energies here. Could be circumstances in our environment, could be belief systems and energies within ourselves, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. But Saturn crossing that degree on the day of the new moon, again, it's kind of bringing this endings and new beginnings all at once and wrapping up some karmic uh, energy patterns or karmic situations that we're going through. On the 10th of February, Mercury moves out of Aquarius and into the sign of Pisces. Mercury is the planet of the mind, our thoughts, our ideas, our um, concepts, how we communicate within ourselves and with other people. It's moving into that last sign of the zodiac, Pisces, very intuitive, very creative, very much about unconditional love and compassion and non-judgment. And, you know, it, it becomes very psychic in that placement, very imaginative and artistic in that placement. And Mercury will be in that sign for about three weeks. So for really for the rest of this month of February. Now, the next thing of significance is on the 13th of February, and this is Mars um, at that 29th degree of Aries connecting with Uranus at that 29th degree of Aries. Remember, that's a critical degree. Mars is an activator planet. So whatever Mars touches when Mars is going through the zodiac, it's activating things. It's activating planets in your chart. It's activating other planets that it's connecting to in, in, the, in, the, uh, you know, in the universe there. And Uranus, again, is these redirection, big changes, unexpected changes, strange, unusual happenings, um, higher dimensional energies, download of, of you know, higher mind energies, God mind energies. And it really is going to pack a powerful punch. So look for strange and unusual and unexpected occurrences, communications, um, you know, in the collective of the planet as well as within ourselves. It's really, you know, we need to be more aware with Mars connecting with Uranus because it's like that Aries. Aries is fire and Aries quick and fire and let's move and let's forge ahead and let's go. And so Mars with, with, um, with Uranus and, and Aries is really to kind of slow down and be aware of what's going on and be open to these changes and redirections that are coming. And then on the next day, the 14th of February, Mars is now moving out of Aries and into the sign of Taurus, where it's going to be for the next few weeks. And it's really going to slow down that forward movement. It's going to ground those energies. Taurus is a sign of manifestation. It's a sign of slower movement. Um, it's, you know, a sign of um, the, like, earthiness of this third dimension, okay? So it's, it's really about, again, uh, bringing things into a sense of solidity or form, manifesting, bringing in a sense of security as we now move forward with Mars and Taurus. On the 18th, the Sun is transitioning into Pisces, which it does about this time every year for the next month. But the significant thing, the other significant thing on the 18th is that Chiron is now moving out of Pisces and into the sign of Aries for good for the next few years. Chiron is slow moving. Remember that last year, I don't remember what month it was, somewhere back in the summertime, Chiron went into Aries for a couple of months and then it went retrograde and went back into Pisces. So what does this mean? I want to back up for a moment and say that from the 1st of February until the 18th of February, when Chiron is at that 29th degree of Pisces, again, a critical degree, the last degree of Pisces, it's intensifying the wounded healer energies of Chiron. It's intensifying the healing energies or shamanic energies of Chiron, the teacher energies of Chiron. So the first half or 18 days of the month, Chiron is really bringing up the collective wounds as well as our own wounds from previous lifetimes because Pisces rules past lives. And then we're going to feel this transition of Chiron moving into Aries on the 18th and then moving forward into Aries. 
Now any Chiron wounds are in regards to our sense of self, our individuality, our self-sufficiency, our self-identity. And it's a little bit more, I think, challenging when it was, uh, you know, it has been in Pisces because not only are we dealing with the here and now of the I, which is Chiron and Aries, where it's going into, but we were dealing with the wounds of the past and the wounds of the past lives and, and whatnot. So, you know, it brings its own set of challenges or opportunities for healing. But again, there's that shift that's taking place. On the 19th of February, we have a full moon at zero degrees of Virgo, and it's considered a super moon because the moon is at its closest uh, proximity to the Earth. So when the moon is at its closest proximity to the Earth, um, it's called a super moon, and it has a greater effect. As the moon affects our planet, the closer it is to our planet, the greater its effect is. Zero degrees of Virgo, zero degrees of any sign is a critical degree as well, just like the 29th degree is. So now we have a full moon, uh, a moon phase of completion and endings and releasing and letting go and healing that's happening at a zero degree point, which is a new birth and a new beginning because we're at the zero degree point of Virgo. So again, we have these endings and new beginnings that are happening all at once here with this full moon. Virgo, of course, is a very logical, analytical sign. The moon is very emotional and feeling-oriented. So those, that planet, you know, the moon in the logical sign of Virgo doesn't meld the best. Sometimes we can get into a self-critical phase or a self-judgmental phase, becoming, you know, too it caught up in our head and in the ego mind and, and trying to rationally think things through when the moon just needs to feel, just needs to be emotional. So just keep that in mind. So that's really the highlights astrologically. Now I do want to mention that this month in particular seem to have a lot of what we call sextile energies. Um, sextiles are aspects of opportunity and there was so many that I don't feel I want to take the time in this video to mention them. But just know that there's a lot of the personal planets that are connecting with in a sextile mode to other planets, which again is a positive aspect, which means there's opportunities here in this month to bring change and redirection and create something new for ourselves as long as we're aware and we take action on these opportunities when they come up. So let's go ahead and get into the message from our angels and guides from the Syrian Starseed Tarot. So I meditated and I pulled cards already out of the deck. Let's see what the first card is. Okay, we have the seven of crystals. This is the seven of earth in the traditional tarot. Now the number seven is a very contemplative energy numerologically. It's about going within, contemplating, meditating, thinking things through, taking one's time, being a little bit of a loner, a little bit of a hermit. The crystals is the earth or the pentacles. And so this is about having patience again, having patience with how things are manifesting in our lives. You can see that this individual is carefully setting up his seven crystals, which uh, again, crystals are of the earth, that matter of manifestation, security. And we're needing, it's almost like about planting seeds. That's what the traditional seven of earth is usually about. We're planting seeds and we're patiently going to tend to them while they grow and they begin to sprout and manifest something. Just like I said, that number 14 is made up of that one and that four, and that four energy is about patience and moving slowly, waiting, contemplating, you know, before things start to change. Now, again, the base energy of February is a five, so there is going to be change, but we're needing to patiently kind of tend to things and plant those seeds, plant those ideas, plant the actions, you know, put the actions out there, the intentions out there, and patiently, you know, move forward and kind of go within and kind of analyze, analyze what's happening. The seven is very good with analyzing things, understanding the deeper level and meaning of things. And that's what we're doing, um, at least at the beginning of the month, if not all month. Let's take a look at the second card here. Okay, the, seven, the second card is the Sage of Orbs. Now the Sage in this particular deck is the Queen. So this is the Queen of Orbs, the Queen of Air, the Queen of Swords. This is about ideas. You know, the Queen is a very motherly, nurturing figure, but here she's a professional, an intellectual, 
uh, a thinker, um, an idea person, okay? So she's coming up with new ideas as to how to move forward. She's being very objective with the decisions that she needs to make. Usually the queen is very emotional, but here in the orb suit, she's very intellectual and she's thinking things through and she's processing things. She's weighing both sides of different situations or decisions that she might have to, to make before she actually initiates a plan. So here again, we have some patient planting of seeds and we have some thinking things through logically before taking action going on. And that's part of that patience as well. You know, the sword here, again, for the Sage of Swords or the Queen of Swords is, you know, the ideas, our ideas and our thoughts and even our belief systems and being very kind of grounded. She looks very grounded. She's not anxious. She's not moving. She's just almost contemplating and she's waiting before moving forward. And then let's see what the last card is. Okay, so the last card, it's interesting, we have a fire, a fire card, and a very positive fire card, the six of flames, six of fire, six of wands. And this is a card of, um, this can be a card of like congratulations, promotion, good job, well done, you know, things are moving forward. And actually when I look at the symbology here, we have um, the hand here in the middle holding a torch, with the sixth flame because we have one, two, three, four, five flames here. The sixth flame is being held by this hand. And if you look at, I like, like the symbology here of how this is making a V. It's almost like here I have a new spiritual energy, a new idea. It's positive, it's creative, it's spiritual, and I'm moving forward. It's like this V is like forward movement because this is kind of the point of that forward moving energy. So again, there's something very bright and auspicious and abundant and prosperous that's beginning to happen here in this month of February as we then potentially transition into March and then, you know, the months ahead. But this is a very wonderful sign. It's like the, the light, um, it's like spirit is lighting the way. That's how I want to say it. The universe, spirit, God is lighting the way with this torch and showing us the path. To move forward okay so i feel like this is more perhaps towards the end of the month after some of these other transitory energies are taking place so let's go ahead and take a look at your special message card depending on your stone of choice so for those of you that chose that blue she light i guess it's blue and white the blue and white she light heart let's see what the message for you is the she light people. This one's calling my attention. Centering. Love it. Okay, so let me take a look. These are brand new cards, so I even have to look at them myself. So centering. This is about staying balanced again and having patience, as I have been talking about. Staying balanced, having patience, making sure you're centered, because the more centered you can be within this kind of chaotic flux energy of the lower vibration of the five that we talked about for February, where there's lots of things going on, lots of things changing, lots of things redirecting, juggling, you know, many situations and, and through all this kind of chaotic, nervous, anxious energy, we have to have patience and stay centered and stay balanced for things to reverberate out before the changes happen. This to me is like this reverberation this concentric circle of energy that's starting here where we're balanced and things are starting to change and starting to expand out and starting to manifest out on the outer plane a little bit later as we move forward. So this is your message is to, I feel like meditation, we have two hands here kind of holding in the almost prayer or meditation position. So really breathe, meditate, get out into nature and stay centered and kind of be patient as this reverberation of energy starts to expand out into um, your outer world from the inner. Okay, for those of you that chose the rose quartz, rose quartz people, this one, okay, this one's calling my attention. Connection. This is about connection to spirit, connection to the divine, connection to your angels and guides, connection to your higher soul self. There's, uh, to me, I look at this, 
uh, energy. And it's like, again, that download of energy taking place. How I talked about the Uranian energies at the 29th degree, and, and Uranus is about this download of higher dimensional energies taking place, messages from the universe, guidance from the universe. So you're really needing to be open to that connection. They're talking about opening the crown chakra, allowing that higher ideas, new ideas, new inspirational thoughts to just kind of flood in and flood your mind. And this is going to be what you utilize your, uh, to move forward and to create changes. This is like, a, like almost a matrix of energy here, um, matrix in a, in a positive sense of this new kind of energy vibration that's coming in to affect change in your life as you move forward. And then for those of you that chose the ruby fuchsite, let's see, ruby fuchsite people, this one's calling my attention right here. Guidance, very similar, guidance. So there's guidance from the higher realm, specifically the angelic realm here. This looks like angels to me, even perhaps ascended masters, those of higher um, planes of reality. And I'm feeling specifically about calling on the four archangels, Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Uriel, Archangel Raphael, and the various um, things that they help with, Michael for guidance, Gabriel for messages, uh, Raphael for healing of the physical and the emotional body, and Uriel for healing of the mental body and bringing in new ideas and inspiration, helping you to change your belief systems. There's a rainbow here of opportunities and energies. So I feel like there's a lot of things happening within all of the chakras, both on an internal energetic level as well as an external manifestation level and what those chakras are associated with. So that would be something that you might want to look up. All of this goes to the uh, circle of yellow in the middle, which is our sense of willpower, our sense of courage and confidence to move forward. Know that you have protection and guidance from those higher realms that are assisting you. So I hope you've all liked this monthly angel card reading. I send you all much love and light until we see each other in the next weekly or monthly reading. So many angel blessings, everyone. Namaste.